Today we're looking at Tesla's latest full self-driving beta update version 10.3. And for the first time, we have some pretty in-depth release notes. So we're gonna quickly take a look at those before we head out for the drive and test this software, push it and see what it's capable of. So I will leave these notes up on the screen if you would like to pause and you can read those as you'd like before we go out for the drive. I also noticed before I got in the car, I got a message on my phone that says, car has reached desired temperature. I had the heat on to warm the car up. I don't know, that may have been here already, but I've never seen that message before, so I thought that was great. So the biggest thing here is Tesla is finally allowing us to customize some of the settings in our full self-driving beta cars. Now, when it's level five, none of this should be all that important, but a huge example is the first note you see here talking about rolling stop signs. So by default, the car used to roll a lot of stop signs. Sometimes it would come to zero, but normally it would go down to only maybe one, two, three, or even five miles per hour before it continued through. And that is clearly illegal. So those that would like to make complete stops at the stop signs, that is an option you can now enable in the settings. Now I have heard some complaints online. People are saying when they're adjusting some of these settings that they're getting locked out of beta. If you let the car sleep or restart it, that should bring everything back, but just be aware that bug seems to be present. Another bullet point I really wanna point out is the fourth one, improved crossing object velocity estimation. So looking for cross traffic, they also upped the frames per second that the system is using by 1.7 frames per second. So we should get much more accurate estimation on how fast cross traffic's coming and how close it is. So creeping out and then continuing getting in front of traffic should be a lot better. Third from the last, reduced false slowdowns and improved offsetting by pedestrians by improving the model of interaction between pedestrians and the static world. So reduced false slowdowns, hopefully that's across the board because in version 10.2 I was getting a lot of these little tiny phantom brakes where we were dropping, you know, maybe three to five miles per hour. Nothing dangerous, but really annoying. All right, so checking out some of these new settings, really exciting here to see full self-driving beta profile. We can have chill, average, and assertive. So for this drive, I think we'll go with assertive just to see you know, what happens because that'll be most interesting, but we'll definitely be trying out these different settings and uh, we'll see. It kind of depends on what you're most comfortable with. In this setting, the car will have a smaller following distance, perform more frequent speed lane changes, and will not exit the passing lanes and may perform rolling stops. So you don't get an exact toggle for rolling stops on or off. I would really like to see that, um, but this way you can kind of indirectly control it. If we go into chill mode, we'll have a larger following distance and perform fewer speed-based lane changes. In average, we'll have a medium following distance and may perform rolling stops. So yeah, we're gonna go with assertive for this drive. Okay, so we're gonna start with a little bit of dirt road driving here, not too much. It's usually not that much going on on the dirt roads, uh, but the release notes did talk about lane centering and I wanna kind of test that out here because it's always kind of iffy for me. Um, but this looks good so far. Usually on these roads, you will stay near the middle. There is a bit of fog you can see today. I have driven in fog before. It hasn't seemed like too big of a deal. Um, it's not that bad, but it definitely, the visibility is reduced just a bit. So let's get up to this left turn and see how it handles that. Wow, so some really thick fog here. And right as we approach that, the car slows down. So that was really interesting. The car was kind of like, oh, I can't see as well. I'm gonna slow down. This is, this is really great. Uh, the system doesn't seem to be having a problem at all with this extremely heavy fog. So I'm liking that a lot. And our left turn is coming up here. So let's see if the car will take it. I have had the car miss this left turn before. Um, it almost seems as if it doesn't see it, but there we go. So it turns a little slow going through the turn but it does complete it again. Really heavy fog here, pretty cool. So maybe we'll leave this on for a bit just to test out this fog. I'll just cancel our destination so the car can continue. Um, that was weird, we didn't get our little Navigate on autopilot chime, so that's different as well. So that fog did clear up pretty quickly, but I wanna test this right turn here. The car has never made this right turn. It always asks me to complete it because it can't see to the left or right. So it is pretty tough to see. There's a lot of trees in both directions, uh, but moving through that stop sign and yeah, waiting for high-speed cross traffic use accelerator gear stock to continue. So unfortunately I have to tell it to do that turn still. Um, I'm not sure what they're gonna do about that because uh, <laughs> it's really hard to see. So there's like a ton of birds in the road here. We'll see if the car does anything about that. I'm sure they'll move, so I'm not gonna worry too much about them. Uh, yeah, the car does, okay, yeah, braking a little bit and then continuing, so very cool. Uh, probably didn't need to brake, but very cool to see. All right, so no phantom braking so far, not, not one single time, and that road I just went on was a huge culprit of it. And again, with this uh, stop sign, the car is just really bad at it because of the fainted lines. Uh, it's checking for visibility, but it needs to move way up. So come on, let's go. Yeah, so let me just touch the accelerator here. Yeah, it still can't do this one because of the faded lines. So that is no good, come on.
So approaching this first stop sign into downtown does not seem too aggressive. We came up to it really slowly and now we're kind of, okay, so we did technically roll it, but uh, I definitely would not call that aggressive. Um, I, I much rather would have quickly come up to the stop sign, slowed down and then moved through. Um, but that's all gonna be personal preference. Okay, so finally into the more downtown part, we have an unprotected left here with somebody, oh, I thought they were gonna come straight and the car has no problem moving through. Very good. We actually, on that left, have had a lot of times where the car would slow down or even stop in the middle of that left turn, uh, which of course is really bad. So glad to see it nice and smoothly take that um, left turn there. And then we have two rights back to back. We went down to one mile per hour, checking for visibility, and then we're good. So I don't know if that car ahead uh, that it saw, it wasn't sure if they were at the stop sign. Um, but I'm, I'm fine with all of this. It's actually doing a pretty good job. It's just, um, I mean, it doesn't say aggressive. Now that was, <laughs> it says assertive and that was assertive. That was like, all right, we're going. We're going up to a three-way stop here. So I will say it does seem the rerouting has been fixed, which like, thank you so much Tesla, because that was really bad. The, the car used to kind of lose its mind when it, you would keep full self-driving on and then pick a new route. The car would just like freak out. So really good that it doesn't do that really nice natural stop there and then move through so we didn't have any cars to contend with we'll we'll go through that one again just to, to we'll, we'll try to find some stop signs with other cars at least um, but yeah that that was very natural so even in this fog let's see it should easily see these lights up ahead and yes it does it sees them no problem uh, they're pretty clear through the fog but still you never know if fog can can trip it up and I found that through a camera it the fog is not as apparent uh, anywhere near as apparent as like with your own eyes so if you were sitting here in the car with me this fog would look thicker than what you're seeing so waiting at this blinking yellow sometimes could trip the car up we're too far back we definitely should be in the intersection um, to make this move but we should get a green arrow now I hope there you go the car should yep quickly and confidently moves through that left with the green arrow. So if you're gonna get a green arrow, I'm good with that, but one improvement we really need is on a green where you don't have a green arrow or that blinking yellow, the car needs to move into the intersection. Uh, so this is always a tough uh, route change for the car because it's really quick and we have a lot happening. So it missed that left turn and very gracefully waits for the reroute. Again, misses its, its uh, turn there, slowing down a bit, but hey, it gracefully waited for the reroute. In the past, you would get these, <laughs> see it keeps missing, it keeps missing the turns. In the past, you'd get these big swings where the car would, you know, be like, oh, I'm supposed to turn right and just turn right or left out. It didn't matter what the scenario was. Like right here, it would just like, you know, turn right um, into whatever was there. Now, look at that, those rerouting, that was what, three reroutes in a row? Very graceful, that's exactly what needs to happen. Uh, sometimes you'll miss what uh, your turn or whatever, um, and that's fine, as long as it handles it, okay. Yeah, very good. I mean, all of this turning, all of this is very good. Um, phantom braking, I think I, I've had one, I don't know how I'm cutting this video, I'll probably cut out the boring stuff rather than fast forward, um, but I've had one phantom brake so far, like a really gentle, I dropped three miles an hour, I think. Um, so moving over, we definitely didn't need to slow down or stop for him, but that's fine, not dangerous at all, so I'm okay with it. Um, but phantom braking seems way better. Oh man, 10.2 was just not good for me. Um, so, oh, are we gonna miss this turn? No, we're not. Oh, very awkward. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow, okay. So it like wasn't sure if that was a street. You can see the visualization kind of put a red line and the car's like, okay, we'll just, never mind. let's take this next one. Wow, very cool. So it hasn't rerouted yet, but it will on the map. Look at that correction. That is amazing. So that, that gives me confidence for things like closed roads and stuff where the car maybe will, you know, awkwardly get too close to it. Um, oh, we got a car to our left. All right, nice. Wow, good stop, good stop. And then rolling and going through. Wow, okay, this is good. This is really good. I'm loving assertive. Um, I don't really want to switch it. <laughs> uh, I guess we can switch it to whatever, mild or whatever it is just to see. So unprotected here, but it sees there's no cars, moves right through, love it. Love it, love it. Okay, okay. This is great. This is really great so far. All right, now we got the sun in our face. So that's gonna maybe mess us up. Let's see what happens here. So we're getting into this left turn lane way too early. So I'm gonna report that. So a little confusion there. I assume from the fog. 
Um, but yeah, in that left, le left turn lane way too early, um, waiting for the blinking yellow, and now it's clear to go. And it looks like the car just does not want to go through blinking yellow. So I'm going to give it a tap here. Yeah, and then let's see. Okay, it sees the green and continues. So for now, it doesn't want to do blinking yellows, which is weird because it used to, and that's no good. You can't, you know, sit there on a blinking yellow like that. People will not be happy. All right, let's switch it to chill. Let's see if we can do this as we're driving. So, yep, we're chill now. We'll see uh, if the car has any bugs or errors with that. So that turn was really nice. Who knows? Maybe it already had um, an assertive turn planned before I changed its mind. Um, let's try to go back to that three-way stop and try that out. So cresting that hill very nicely. I know before I'm um, going uphills or even going downhill sometimes would trip the car up and make it slow down a pretty good amount. Michigan is pretty flat, so I don't encounter that a lot, but uh, yeah, th that hill was handled really well. So this will be tough to see. We have um, a dealership to our right, with a bunch of gas cars nobody wants. And wow, the car just moves right out and gets in front of somebody. But you know what? It was really good. I was a little unsure about that, but here you go. Let me put up the rear cam. I mean, they're back They're back there. They're way back there. So we had plenty of room, but yeah, it's just, you know, the car's driving. I'm kind of like, oh, should we really get in front of this person? And yeah, we should have. That was a great move. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that was really good. And and that's on the, um, the casual. Okay, so do not block intersection. Look at this. What? Can it read that sign? This is amazing. It's not blocking the intersection waiting for that red light. I don't think that's a fluke because I definitely have uh, stopped it from doing that before in the past. This is, wow. I mean, I don't know if I can read that sign, but I got somebody walking up on our right. Um, they are on the screen. Okay. I'm very impressed by that. That was really good. And then the light turns green and immediately we begin to move forward. That, wow, that's a huge improvement. That is huge because I definitely was not doing that like that before. All right, so back to the stop sign. I really wanna be here with other cars though, so I'm probably gonna go through this a few times um, so we can interact with somebody. But with nobody here, we should stop. So we still rolled the stop sign, even though, let me double check, we are on chill. So you may need to, like I may need to, let me, I haven't had to disengage, so let me turn it off um, and, and see if that'll fix it. Okay, driving myself is really weird now. I don't, I don't like that. This is, it's getting so good. I'm so excited. So quickly moving through that right turn on the green, which is great because I don't want the car to be hesitant when other people are waiting. That person, you know, turn left behind me. Um, and if the car's being goofy, you know, that'll be annoying for them. Okay, so we'll see how it does right turn on red. It's done these before, um, but a little timid for me. And even this, yeah, like I can clearly see there's nobody there. Um, but okay, yeah, not bad, not bad. I, I can't complain about that, but I mean, I would have taken it a lot faster. Okay, so we do kind of have a car here, but we were there clearly before them. So the car handled it well, to be fair. Uh, let's try it one more time. Whoa, look at that. There's a little traffic, what the heck was that? What's this little traffic light symbol doing here? Huh, interesting. And I will say, I was like, why isn't the car, oh, we're taking a different, okay, that's fine. Um, I was like, why isn't the car just turning right there? Yeah, it's a one-way street, so the car knew better than me. <laughs> okay, so it's going to try to turn around here. Uh, I have no idea what this is, but I will take it. Go that way. Okay. <laughs> now, then it did, after I complimented it, it did try to go uh, the wrong way down a one way. Now, I guess it's a parking lot, so of a school, and it's a Sunday, so not the end of the world, but still wrong. Okay, so unprotected left here. It's clearly not our turn and the car is uh, knowing that. See here I would have moved up into the intersection um, but who cares? <laughs> Handled it great. Uh, yeah that was really good. So let's do final attempt at these stop signs. Um, okay we're oh what that's weird. Hmm. Um, it said it was going to take us around but then it thought our destination was there so let's see what it does here on its own with no navigation in. Uh, there's no cars here anyway. Come on man. 
All right, now something else we received is actually the Vision parking update. So I just went into a parking lot to try it really quick. I wasn't sure if we got this, but I just put the car in reverse. There's no cars around me and it just sees the lines. So I can hit start here and it will park in a parking spot with no cars around. So look at that right into the spot. I didn't set that, I just stopped the car and, and put it in reverse. So before you had to have two vehicles uh, to park in between because the car was only using the ultrasonic sensors. Now the car will use the cameras, finally, uh, to park rather than the ultrasonic sensors. So it can just see the parking space and it can park in between the lines for you. So you can see here, oh, I should, I wasn't gonna direct screen record, but I should do it so you can see it better. Let me, wow, look at that. That's a good parking job. Let's see. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, let's get out. I'm like, let's get out and, and look at this parking job. So this is the car auto parking here. Don't mind my decoration I started to take off and didn't finish. Uh, <laughs> that is like perfectly in that spot, right in between the lines. Look at the back, right up against that back line, little bit of space. That is really good. Let's do it uh, one or two more times. I'll direct screen record and we can check it out. This is my favorite decal, by the way. I think I'm leaving that one on. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna pull out of this parking spot. I'm just gonna pull forward a little bit and I'm just gonna stop right here and put the car in reverse. That's it. So it sees a spot it wants to park in. I click start and it's going for that spot right there. So it goes about two spots back it looks like. So let's let it do this. So yeah, it's a little close to the line, but last time it corrected itself. Now we have somebody approaching in front of us. Let's see, the car waits and then moves forward. It's correcting itself. and then finishes parking. Now that is very cool. It's a little bit slow. Of course, you probably, unless you don't back in a lot, you probably could do this faster yourself. But this is the first steps to uh, reverse summon or whatever you wanna call it, where you get out of the, of the car at your destination at the door, and then the car drives itself into the parking lot and parks itself. I mean, that's really good. Again, like look how we are in between the lines. I, that is really, let's do one more and then uh, we'll call it. So I'm just gonna go, what if I just totally like in the middle of the parking spots, hit reverse. Yeah, so this isn't, you know, a good <laughs> spot to be parking, so that makes sense. Now if I just pull forward right here, we'll go on an angle a little bit, put it in reverse. Yeah, it still doesn't wanna do it. What if I kinda correct it here? Yeah, so you have to kinda be lined up but I mean, it was really natural. I, I didn't uh, have to do anything special before. And then boom. So you just normally drive, um, you know, in a parking lot, throw it in reverse, and then boom, it's gonna park for you. This, and this, it's actually faster than the, the old version uh, with the ultrasonic sensors. So, wow, very, very cool. I mean, right in the spot. Didn't even have to correct that time. Let's see. Boom, wow. Super impressed. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, leave them down below and you will see me in the next video.